Putin and his security costs. Vladimir Putin is by far one of the most famous, and at times infamous, leaders of the world in our modern day and age. Ever since he took over as president of the former Soviet Union in 2000, he has been up to a lot of questionable decisions by making and breaking deals, working with country leaders that have been otherwise excommunicated and or blacklisted by the US for quite some time, and occasionally finding time to ride horseback shirtless because why not? But just like any other leader in the world, there has been quite a number of assassination attempts on his life, threats of violence against himself and his family, along with your typical run-of-the-mill issues with running a country that just about any head of state would encounter. Even just as recently as this year, Senator Lindsey Graham of South Carolina had called out Putin on social media by stating that somebody should take this guy out in response to Russia and their recent invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Yet, the real question becomes, how does one beef themselves up with security measures to combat these threats, and what is the price tag on these kinds of things? Well, strap in for a damn good time, because on today's video, we are going to be going over the cost, the logistics, and everything in between about Vladimir Putin's security team, as well as the cost of what it takes to roll with a crew of his. Now, before we get into the nitty-gritty of it all, there is a few things that we should note here. Being that this is a very sensitive topic to both national security of a country and to you, the viewer at home, some of this information isn't going to be totally accurate and or correct, as for more obvious reasons, there are going to be top-level security secrets which the general public, i.e. you and I, will not have readily available knowledge about. But now, with that out of the way, let's get into it as much as we can. His Past Hits and Present Problems it's no secret that once you are at the top of the power hierarchy as the leader of a company or even a country, you're going to have just about everyone and their cousin coming after you for your money or your power, and Putin is no exception to this. Over the course of his tenure in the Russian political space, there has been at least seven known attempts on his life, with the most recent bounty getting put on his head after the Russian invasion of Ukraine in February 2022. Outside of Senator Graham and his comments on Twitter, according to the Great British News, international security experts have been looking to put a nearly one million pound bounty on Putin's head. By all means though, this isn't even the first time his chrome dome was asked to get put on a silver platter. Back in 2012, a failed coup was foiled, which was in response to Putin winning the election, whenever several men who were arrested in the Ukrainian black seaport of Odessa in January had been dispatched to kill Putin by the Chechen rebel Doku Umarov, the leader of Russia's separatist Islamist movement. And one might be asking, how has he been able to get away from all these types of attempts? In an interview in 2017 with Oliver Stone, Mr. Putin was asked the same exact type question and had replied, I talked to Fidel Castro about that, and he said to me, do you know why I'm still alive? Because I always dealt with my security personally. And when it comes to personal security, Putin comes prepared with plenty of men, armor, guns, and of course, pure determination and grit. Putin is packing for action. As we stated previously, not much is known in terms of numbers for the cost of what all it takes to run such a detailed and very tight operation in protecting Vladimir Putin on a day-to-day -day basis let alone the full logistics of how every little detail of his security team operates. But there is a few things here and there that has been covered from various sources that can give us a glimpse into what that all looks like. For starters, if for any reason that Putin needs to leave the Kremlin for things like G20 meetings or going to national sporting events, there will be whole teams that scout out an area months in advance before Vladimir Putin even puts his shoes on to leave the presidential palace. First, the team will analyze all possible threats that could pop up at any moment, be it criminal activity, social unrest, image perception, and even the possibility of natural disasters, for example, earthquakes or floods in the region during the potential visit. After the place is thoroughly checked, the security team's IT engineers and technicians will then install jammers in the area to block any radio detonation signals to the president's location about a week or so before the visit, and stick around right up until Vlad is back on the plane to Moscow. The equipment maintained by the president's surveillance team pings all smartphones and other devices in the immediate proximity to the president's location so as to control any suspicious activity. 
And yes, if you are wondering, according to Russian laws, the president's security has the right to install and use tapping hardware and or software of any kind, conduct body searches, have access to any building along with seizing any vehicle, all without your consent. And I thought getting past the bouncer at the local club was hard enough. Of course, these guards are far from being the guy that works as the local bouncer in your typical downtown club, but rather they are hand-picked and highly trained elites that have more than a few tricks up their sleeve. All the Kremlin's men. Putin's bodyguards, who call uncritically themselves his musketeers, are made up of a special unit that is formed from Russia's Federal Protective Service, or FSO, which is the Russian equivalent of the United States FBI service to the President of America. But while the name of this group sounds about as goofy as the original book written by Alexander Dumas, the men themselves are anything but a joke. In fact, Putin's bodyguards are handpicked for qualities that include operational psychology, physical stamina, and the ability to withstand the coldest of cold and not even sweat in the most intense heat. And as for what they protect themselves with, they're reportedly outfitted with special briefcases that serve as shields to protect Putin and carry Russian-made 9mm SR-1 vector pistols loaded with armor-piercing bullets. In terms of how Putin rides around in style from event to event, there is a plethora of convoys of heavily armored vans that carry special military operators armed with AK-47s, anti-tank grenade launchers, and portable anti-aircraft missiles. And when he steps out of the car, there are immediately four rings of security surrounding him, starting with his personal bodyguards, a second invisible ring of guards hidden amid the crowd, and still more ringing the perimeter of the area with snipers perched on the surrounding rooftops. Trust me on this one, you aren't even going to be getting a simple handshake without getting seen from everywhere and anywhere first. So there you have it, folks. That is almost everything that we know about Putin, his security team, and the overall nature of how one man is protected by his people. What do you guys think about all that security? Do you think it's an overkill, or is it just about right for a guy like him in the position of power he has? What kind of security detail would you want to have if you were the president of a country and how would you keep yourself safe from harm? Let us know all your thoughts and ideas down in the comment section below. And until the next video, have a damn good rest of your day.